Hey there, this is Christine. Thanks for tuning into my Mostly Keto Kitchen today. What I'd like to talk about today are oxidized fats. And so I'd like to follow up on a video that I previously put out that looked at seed oils and talked about how the polyunsaturated seed oils that have a lot of double bonds in them aren't so healthy for us. And so I'd like to um, also talk more specifically about olive oil in a future video. And so I feel like this video is sort of to lay some of the biochemical groundwork so you can better understand it. Um, I also want to clarify the word oxidation because it's a really important word and it's used in a couple of different ways in nutritional biochemistry. So um, first of all, let's talk about some of the fatty acids that I've got drawn on the board here. So up at the top here, we've got omega-3 fats. So omega-3 comes from the fact that the double bond is at the third carbon from the end. But there are also double bonds at the six carbon position and the nine carbon position. So omega-3 fats have lots of double bonds in them. And it's really interesting. They don't actually look like this. They're more like a corkscrew is the shape because these are what we call cis double bonds. I didn't draw them that way here, but just in the interest of space, I kind of, we often just draw them more simply like that. But they actually um, bend around kind of like U-shaped. Each of those bonds is a U-shape. So very corkscrew-like. Uh, and then the omega-6, the first double bond happens at the six carbon from the end. And so there's a double bond at the six and then also up at the nine. And then the omega-9, that's what we call the monounsaturated because it just has the double bond only at the nine position. And that's what olive oil and avocado oil, those are predominantly um, monounsaturated with the one double bond at the omega-9 position. So fats can be used both as energy and for signaling. And when either way, there's gonna be some type of enzyme with an active site and the fatty acid's gonna fit in there just perfectly and then you're gonna be able to have the reactions take place. So when it's for energy, you're going to get rid of those double bonds, turn it into a saturated fat, and then it's just gonna go through the regular, what we call fatty acid oxidation. So here's that first word of oxidation. It's called beta oxidation, but people often leave off the word beta when they talk about it, but that's how fats get turned into energy. They get broken down into that little two carbon chunk called acetyl-CoA, and then that goes on to create chemical energy known as ATP. Now, fatty acids can also use, be used as signaling molecules. So we've talked before about how omega-6 fats can be signaling molecules in the inflammation pathways and omega-3 fats seem to help kind of prevent um, the omega-6s from getting into the active site so there's more competition for the active site and that's why omega-3 fats seem to be good for diminishing inflammation is because it just helps to prevent more of the signaling through the omega-6 pathway. So anyway, so those are kind of those two different things. But what I really want to point out here is the other way in which we use the word oxidation. So down here, I'm showing a fatty acid that has been oxidized. Okay, it's undergone oxidation, but it's a different type of oxidation. It's not this one over here that's the beta oxidation. This is oxidation that happens either outside of our bodies, okay, so if we heat oils that have double bonds in them, and there's oxygen, of course, in the air, that oxygen can react with those double bonds and create an oxidized fat. So we think of oxygen as being like this super stable, awesome molecule, but really it's not that stable, right? Pulling apart those two oxygens, it's pretty easy to do that, and one of those can come here and get attached onto the fat. So we eat oxidized fats, but we also generate something called reactive oxygen species in our body, and so this is through metabolism that we do that. So an oxidized fat can also be generated in our body, and that's another way that we make oxidized fats. Now, oxidized fats are not so good for us. What happens is that they look kind of like the regular fatty acid up here, that naturally would just go into the enzyme active site. But because of the slight chemical change here of having that OH group, it's not the right shape. So if this is your, um, your enzyme active site and you're trying to get this oxidized fat in there, it just doesn't fit. You know, maybe it's got like a little kink sticking up. So it just doesn't fit right in there. Normally our body would just get rid of foreign objects through the liver and you know get rid of the foreign molecules, I guess I should say, um, get rid of it through the liver. You know, you just detoxify, pee and poo it out. But if it's something that looks a lot like something we want, which would be fat, because we'd like that for energy, the body might get confused and say, hmm, well, I can't quite use it, so maybe I'll just, you know, I don't know what to do with it. And so then it accumulates. And that is what, there is quite a bit of evidence that arterial plaques contain oxidized fatty acids. And so I drew a blood vessel here, and here's an arterial plaque that's starting to grow. Eventually, this thing will grow, and it will pull off, and it'll go to a place where the blood vessel is more narrow, and when it causes a blockage, that's how you end up with heart attack or stroke. 
So there's definitely a connection between these oxidized fats being a component of um, the arterial plaques and then that can lead to um, heart disease and stroke. So we do want to avoid the number of oxidized fats that we eat. So, Okay, well hopefully that was clear and it sort of sets the groundwork then for talking about sort of the unusual class that is these monounsaturated, so not a lot of double bonds. And there are also some other important things about olive oil that I'd like to share with you in my next video. So thanks so much for tuning in.